A few people have commented on some of the photos I put on Instagram when this build was in progress, but here it is. This is uh, the complete build of my new cart. First one I've built in about nine years, almost nine years uh, since the old one that's over there. And uh, yeah, so far so good. I like the way that it came out. I'm just gonna walk through some of the details on this thing and why I built it the way I built it uh, based on the way I typically work. Overall size wise, it's close to a junior size cart. Um, the targeted footprint uh, inside the frame is uh, 40 inches wide, 24 inches deep. And I prefer smaller, narrower carts for a reduced footprint, you know, less mass, better maneuverability, um, especially when you're on location. And also if, you know, I need to operate this thing inside a vehicle, I could much more potentially fit it inside a, a command van or something like that. And it also, the smaller it is, the easier it is for it to go up and down a flight of stairs if it has to. And um, a shorter height is also necessary because of the vehicle that I transport this in when I take it to and from work. The car is designed to be as tall yet as short as can be and to operate it from a low chair like this one. I prefer sitting in this low chair for a number of reasons. Um, chiefly is that when I'm lower, people can see over my head, typically the DP next to me here and gaffer and key grip often seated behind and not their taller chairs. It's not a problem for them to see over and around my head to see the monitors. So I chose to build my new cart out of 80-20 aluminum extrusions. Um, I don't know if this is actually 80-20, but uh, that's the common name for it. It's called T-slot. I have experience building with this stuff before. I've built another car to build some shelves, to build a platform to work on my motorcycle. Um, it's built the rack that's underneath there. And um, based on the ubiquitous nature of quarter 20 hardware, that's why I decided to build it out of like, based on a one inch profile. McMaster Car sells this stuff. The Atlanta warehouse is about 25 miles from me. So I can order the stuff. It's usually ready for pickup before I can drive there. I think the most I've ever waited, maybe an hour and a half or two hours. I actually calculate the cuts and the lengths based on, I think the, ma the maximum I usually do is an eight foot length. And then I'll cut it down from there to assign those cut pieces to various parts of the cart. The only parts on this cart that are steel are, I think there's some steel in the monitor mounts. Besides all the, the T-nuts and the screws and bolts holding it together, the casters are steel and the ball bearing slides on the drawers are steel, just the slides. Look, even the drawers are aluminum. Measured this cart with the drawers attached but empty, none of the components on it. The whole thing with the monitor, the lower monitor mount rigged was about 120 pounds. So not as light as my old Rubbermaid speed, mate, speed rail cart, but very light um, and way more robust, way more solid um, and a lot better looking. Let's put it that way. Starting at the ground here, I have 10 inch pneumatic casters with foot brakes. This is framed with one inch by two inch T-slot profiles. And it's got a sheet of five gauge aluminum 5052 bolted underneath. So the lower deck, this houses my custom rack unit that I built also out of T-slots. I have yet to wire everything in here for DC. So this bin contains all the AC wall warts and things like that. I'm currently running it with a uh, UPS power supply. Then I have a USB device charger here and some battery chargers back here also on top of the UPS. So this is what makes this cart custom. As I said, I like to operate from a lower position and I still wanted to have the cart be as tall as possible and give as much space up top for DP to spread out, to operate iris controllers. There's, they, there's space for the laptop there or their lunch or whatever. And I have this slide out tray that brings all of my computer control surfaces right to me. And I have my keyboard, my trackball. Everybody should be using a trackball and not a mouse. Trackpad's okay. I have my color control surface. Some people don't even use them anymore. Um, and a stream deck right here. And then I also have a, on an arm that I can position around the corner here. 
a tablet pen monitor. It's nice on some of these controls for um, the curves feature in live grade, and it's just another option for an interface. But the nice thing is, is that this is just above my lap. Um, it clears these uh, arms on the chair. I'd actually like it to be a little bit lower, but this is the lowest I could get it while still having the height I needed for a future expansion of the computer system and rack underneath and still allow it to slide out and have enough space for all these items. Now, in the future, I would like to have this be able to slide out and over because I could add a monitor on the side and then the entirety of the front of the cart could be uh, utilized for the DP. So one of my main priorities with this build was to size it for onboard storage. And I have a nice 3U rack drawer here with all the more common bits stored right here in easy reach. And then there's another drawer down here on the bottom. And that drawer has, you know, tools, some spare electronics, ratchet straps, and D-rings, just a bunch of uh, stuff. Oh, I keep my weather protection in there. So I have a space blanket and um, a bag that I store in there. These drawers are from Penn Elcom. They have a new series, and I don't remember the, the number. It's like R225, something like that. But these are aluminum rack drawers, so lightweight. So this thing is sized to actually take two of those side by side. Um, and I would love to do that, but it would have made the cart too tall. Then I would have lost all of the gains I made ergonomically with the pull-out shelf if I had to reach way up here to the top deck to get to the iris controllers. The top deck is a very solid piece of a composite material called alumalite. And alumalite is um, very popular in the sign industry. And basically it is, if, you can, if I can get this to focus, it is a piece of coroplast that has uh, bonded aluminum, really thin, I don't know what the gauge is or whatever, it's very thin aluminum bonded to it and it makes it a very light, very stiff material. So I just ordered um, basically a blank sign, that's how McMaster Car sells this stuff, and cut it to length and it is actually sandwiched in between the lower of this two by one railing channel. It's basically just held in place by friction. I tucked in this uh, thermoplastic panel gasket and I wouldn't recommend this stuff for really heavy duty use. I wouldn't put, you know, big lens cases and stuff like that. Camera bodies, um, gimbals, big th things that are heavy uh, and pointy, I wouldn't necessarily put on here. But I'm using a uh, tool toolbox drawer liner uh, down on the all the surfaces. There's some of the drawers, lower deck, upper deck. There's some right here. And of course, you know, the rug just ties the whole car together. One feature I wanted to try to incorporate with this new build was I wanted to have a little bit of movement in the uh, video monitors. You know, you're usually on baby pin mounts and they've got some either friction or ball mount. My design uses um, some television mounts actually. Um, they're from Ergotron. It offsets a couple inches. So as you can see, instead of hanging right over the back edge of the cart, they're towards the front of the cart a few inches. But the nice thing is, is that it allows for a little bit of panning left and right and have uh, positioned them so that they can, you know, basically tilt into each other or if I need to tilt one out to the side, it can go out about that far. And the other nice thing is that there's a knob right on the back here and then you can tilt up slightly and then tilt down to that degree. So from my operator position right here, everything is down here low on my shelf. Got my pen, gonna reach over here with the tablet. If I was left-handed, this would be even better. But I have a clear view to my hero monitor up here, the A monitor. I have currently a um, Odyssey 7Q as a scope. And then I have another magic arm. I'm using my um, iPad as kind of a secondary display. It's actually an extension of my desktop. And instead of using all those little filter tags or tape tag to constantly Velcro pieces of GAC all over my monitors to remind people of who the operator is, who the first is, what lens each camera is wearing, what the filter pack is for each lens. I just use that as an extension and I put up a little spreadsheet and I just display it right there. That seems to work 
a lot better because I can constantly update it. You know, this whole thing, again, look at how empty this is. Obviously, I don't have iris controllers up here. That's where these would go up here. But everything else is uh, cleaned off and clear and nowhere near as cluttered as my previous build was. And that was the main goal, was just try to make every make sure everything was cleaned up as much as it can and to make it as, you know, uh, an uncluttered and calming uh, place on set as can be because our jobs are hard enough. So by far the worst part about this whole thing, and I don't have a lot of complaints, but the worst part is, is that this thing is sitting here in my garage, not at work. I'm not getting paid to rent it out, to use it. It is sitting here waiting to go to work like a lot of us have been in 2023. It's been pretty awful. I'm sure that's relatable for a lot of you. So uh, hopefully this thing will be seen along with me operating it on set soon and we can all get back to work and uh, make some money because uh, it really sucks to have something this uh, capable and nice sit around and not earn its place. So thanks for your interest. If you want any more details, uh, you can message me and contact me. But uh, hope to see you all out there and be safe on set.